If you had hoped that man's best friend, those beautiful, wonderful, and cute dogs that we all call pets, were safe from the Democrats and their mishandling of pretty much everything, unfortunately, you'd be wrong. Hey Freethinkers, Chandler here, and during these very scary times in our country, many people look at their lives and say, man, I don't think I'm anywhere near as good, off, or well off as I was four years ago in comparison to now. But not only does this apply to people, it applies to dogs too. The two stories I have for you today are brought to you by Judicial Watch and the White Coat Waste Project. And we're gonna start with Judicial Watch who are blowing the lid on Joe Biden and his mishandling of his very strong and dangerous dogs. Secret Service agents are now asking for Joe Biden's dogs to be muzzled. Judicial Watch has the story. Judicial Watch announced today that it received 116 pages of Secret Service records from the Homeland Security Department through the Freedom of Information Act that revealed the details about several incidents in which Secret Service personnel were bitten by President Biden's dog, Commander, sometimes requiring medical attention. The records come in response to a February 2024 lawsuit that was filed after the Department of Homeland Security failed to respond to a Freedom of Information Act request. The newly obtained records include a September 12, 2023 email between Secret Service officials stating Joe Biden took commander on a leash to the Kennedy Garden this evening for a walk. And while the president and commander were in the Kennedy Garden, an agent was standing halfway from the booksellers in the family theater. President Joe Biden opened the bookseller door and said something. As I started to walk toward him to see if he needed help, Commander ran through his legs and bit my left arm through the front of my jacket. I pulled my arm away and yelled no. President also yelled something to Commander. President then something. I obliged and Commander let me pet him. When turning to close the door, Commander jumped again and bit my left arm for the second time. POTUS again yelled at Commander and attached the leash to him. My suit coat has three holes, one being all the way through. Thankfully, no skin was broken that time. Let's get to another story. On September 14, 2023, an agent in the Presidential Protective Detail, whose name is redacted using the subject line May 12, 2021, sent an email to a colleague with several attachments, including photos of suits, repair estimates, and a damage to personal property form, indicating that a dog biting incident had occurred on May 12, 2021. In the claim form, the agent asks for almost $1,000 for a new suit because through no fault or negligence of my own, the coat was torn by a dog bite. And on September 25th, 2023, a sergeant in the uniform division emailed a colleague that commander bit an agent that day. You currently have redacted and redacted available after 2055 hours. FYI, there was a dog bite and the officer may need to go to the hospital. Redacted is covering for redacted who was at redacted. Have a safe shift. This almost feels like a taunt. It's almost like working for president of the United States as a security secret service agent, you're more in danger by the president's family, including the dog, than by external factors. I mean, I, I don't know when the last time a secret service agent was injured by anybody during like an assassination attempt or anybody attempting to get to the president, but it appears that internally via dogs, secret service agents are at a lot more risk of being hurt. That's insane. And last but not least, I'm sure there's numerous more stories, but a Secret Service log that same day reported that at 8.06 p.m. on that day, OFC redacted, POST redacted, advised, bit by family pet and requested sector official, sergeant redacted, requested emergency medical to respond. And at 8.08, the log notes, some more redacted things, advised White House medical held post redacted, OFC redacted, redacted, advised family pet second floor White House residence. If that isn't your smoking gun or chewed up chew toy, I don't know what is. Not only did Judicial Watch write an article about this, but they actually discussed it in June 18th edition of the show. Let's take a peek at it here. And if a dog attacked your family member, bit him on the thigh or bit him on the arm, would you think that's important? And the dog was owned by the President of the United States and you knew that the person, the dog had previously bitten 20, 25, 30 people previously. Those poor Secret Service agents are getting bit. He's got a point. I mean, dog bites are a serious issue. And I tell you, when the commander in chief allows the people who protect him to be abused like that, that that's, I, I keep on, I hate to use the word because I think it's strong, but it's appropriate, it's psychotic. 
sociopathic, is that the word? It's insanity. It's criminal abuse of power, in my view. And you want to know, you know, you wonder why it is that he casually jails his political opponents? Well, that to me is easy to understand if you understand he's casually allowing and, say, and accusing the people protecting him of lying as his dog is attacking them. But of course, presidential puppies biting Secret Service agents isn't the only very sad and telling story we have of this current administration and its immense failure to take care of its dogs. Next up, we have the literal human embodiment of science, Dr. Fauci. Many of you may remember a very large story that came out in which it was alleged that Dr. Fauci had funded and been involved in some very gruesome scientific rituals involving beagles. I rapped about it in a song to show you how much of the media attention it got. Arrest Fauci for killing a puppy. Who will in a fight for the future? future? And I have to put a disclaimer on the video. The things I'm about to talk about are a little gruesome. And they're so gruesome, in fact, I might not even fully be able to share it on this video. So bear that in mind, I might skip past a few things. If you wanna read more about it, it's all linked in the description where everything will be detailed for you in its fully disgusting nature. So for those of you unaware, in 2020 and 2021, the White Coat Waste Project blew the lid on a very secret and very disgusting story involving Dr. Fauci and our favorite canine friends that were being straight up tortured. Uh, I'm gonna be very careful in how I read out all of this to you guys. Like I mentioned before, the links are in the description if you wanna know more. But White Coat Waste revealed how the NIAID, which is the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, I might. I think that's the acronym, wasted tax dollars to buy beagle puppies and strap insects onto their skin. And the cost of the taxpayers for this was $18.4 million. And there's an actual photo of it, of which I'm not zooming in, but you can see they've got like a cup over a, uh, over a dog, which is terrible. But then it said they spent $400,000 in which healthy dogs were given an experimental drug and then infested with another type of disease. And it showed that the dogs were vocalizing in pain during the experiments, after which they were unfortunately no longer alive. Additionally, experimenters admit this inves investigational drug had been extensively tested and confirmed in different animal models, such as mice, meaning these tests were not just cruel, but unnecessary and wasteful. And there's some more of it right there. The Daily Caller broke that story after the White Coat Waste predicted it. But here is the big piece. You guys might have seen this image before, and this was the most damning piece of evidence when it came out. Our investigators discovered that Dr. Fauci's NIH department shipped part of a $375,000 grant to a lab in Tunisia, where they have no oversight, to drug beagles and lock them in cages filled with insects. The experimenters starved those insects so they were hungry, and then the insects were given free reign of the dogs as they were sedated. What is the scientific purpose of this? I, I, don't, I don't know what the scientific purpose of this, but it sounds a whole lot like our government at the time loved to take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of taxpayer dollars and send them to foreign countries or sometimes even worse, a worse thing, funded within our own country to brutalize man's best friend. In the chase of science, I, I don't know, I think, I think I'm done. So there you have it. Man's best friend, unfortunately, is under attack. Uh, some of these things actually began during the Trump era, but thankfully the Trump administration worked hard to put a stop to it and refund the taxpayer dollars. But it appears during the Biden era, well, these things might have been allowed to happen all over again. So I say we need to put a stop to this as soon as we can. We need to give Biden to uh, give his dogs up to somebody that actually knows how to train them and make them not bite people and send them to the hospital. And last but not least, we need to restore honor and respect to man's best friend, our favorite little dogs. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to check out any of the two stories we read, I'll have them linked in the description for you guys to check out and maybe vomit because I know if one of those is really disgusting and the other one is just kind of sad. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the support, especially on my most recent video about Pride Month. You guys are blowing it out of the park. If you want more content like that and like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. If you're interested in supporting my ability to keep making videos like this, then be sure to check out the description and hit up donorbox.org slash support dash Chandler or go to MyPillow and purchase something and use discount code CRUMP, that is code CRUMP. Aside from all that, I'll catch you next time, free thinkers. Don't forget to spread the virus of intelligence.